this is serious. Fourth of July, fast approaching. Labour, Tories, someone or something else. And what will that mean for the normal person is deadly serious. Will either of the main political parties put the great back into Britain? Welcome to this week's edition of Money Matters. I've covered recently, but let's cover it again, that if you look at the UK, the GDP, the amount of money that UK PLC makes, 44% of it goes in tax. Just look at this chart. Half of it gets taken by the government to spend on initiatives, projects, welfare, benefits. The UK's debt is huge. It is massive. It's the biggest it's ever been. So there's all this money being taken and spent. Did you know there's nearly six million people that work for the public services in the UK? So we've got this massive government, massive tax take, and a massive bill, a massive headache, and a massive problem. Somebody was talking to me earlier on today about Brexit and the fact that a couple of million Polish people left the UK and went back to Poland, and it was almost like poor Polish people. They've gone back to Poland and, you know, they're not staying in a first world country like the UK. The GDP, the wealth that's created per person in Poland is likely to go above the UK within the next two years. So never mind economic migrants coming from Poland to the UK. I think in the next two to three years, you're going to see maybe your children, maybe you yourself going to other countries because the economy is better there, because people make more money there, because average wages are higher there. This little tiny island nation was once the most powerful in the world. The UK that exists now is a far cry from that. So my question is, will either of the main political parties put the great back into Britain? No they won't. The Labour Party say they're going to raise taxes. Taxes are already through the roof. They're talking about, oh, there's 8 million people on the NHS waiting list, too many. And they want to reduce that by 2 million people a year. And they also want to put a mental health specialist into every school in the UK. They want to employ more doctors, more nurses. And I'm not saying that the UK shouldn't have those things. What I'm asking is, how the hell is the UK going to pay for those things? That's my question. And then if you say, well, what are the Tories going to do? Well, the Tories are going to spend more money as well. The nuclear deterrent, the Trident submarine program needs to be replaced. The budget they're talking about is 100 billion. The Labour and Tory parties haven't actually published their manifestos yet. What's a manifesto? It's a series of promises they make about what they're going to do if they're elected. But what they have got is they've got their working papers and there's talk about what the manifestos are going to be. Essentially, they're the same. You could swap the Labour and Tory leaders and they could run each other's parties. The one difference, significant difference that I can see is the Labour Party is talking about putting VAT on private school fees. But think about what that's going to do. Less people will go to private school, which means that more people will end up in the state sector, which means that class size is going to get even bigger and the state is going to have to spend even more money. So I'm not sure that's a genius idea, but that's not really the point. The point is the differences are so tiny. And if we look at housing, we all know, I mean, my background, housing, investing in property, that as a minimum, the UK needs to be building 300,000 houses a year. Hasn't done that, hasn't even done half of that for the last 10 years. More than 700,000 people arrived in the UK as a result of net migration. And less than 200,000 houses being built, that ignores the natural population growth in the country. Where's the policy that says, this is how we're going to fix the housing crisis? There isn't one. Where's the policy that says, this is how we're going to fix the productivity crisis and increase everybody's wages? There isn't one. People's real wages haven't increased. So what's real wages? Real wages are the amount of money that people get adjusted for inflation. So yes, the amount of money people get in their pay packet has gone up, but not in real terms, it's gone down. Because yeah, you might have more pounds, but those pounds are buying a hell of a lot less food. They're buying a ridiculous amount less petrol. If we're looking at the political parties and we're saying, well, what I'm saying, I don't think it makes any difference which one of those two is elected. 
they're not going to make a difference to your life. It's still going to be very hard, if not impossible, for you to retire with any dignity. It causes me physical pain every time I see the headlines every year about pensioners having to choose between eating and heating. We shouldn't be doing that to our older generation. Do you honestly think the Labour or the Tory party are going to fix that? Are they going to fix the housing crisis? Are they going to fix the economic crisis? Are they going to fix the debt crisis? They're not even talking about it. It's not even on their agenda. Ask yourself the question, if I carry on doing what I'm doing now, is my life going to turn out like I want it to? Some of you have probably got great jobs or great businesses, but when I'm saying some of you, I mean less than 5%. 95% of people watching this video have probably got not enough money, they can't make ends meet, they want something that I don't think is ridiculous. Like maybe they want to buy their own house, but they can't afford to because they can't save up a deposit because they're paying too much in rent. Or maybe they're in their 40s, 50s or 60s and they just want to be able to have a decent retirement and look after the grandchildren, but they can't. So if you're one of those people, what can you do? Who is the one person in this world, on this planet that can save you? You. When I learned that lesson many, many years ago, it changed everything for me. So now I live out here in Monaco. If you decide that you don't trust the system anymore, if you decide that you don't trust the state anymore, if your view is the same as mine, it doesn't really matter who's elected, they're all gonna screw you one way or another. And maybe you're now ready to take that step that I took many decades ago now, and you're gonna focus on yourself. And you wanna start that journey of not searching for income and trying to get that next salary rise. Maybe you're at that point now where you want to look at investment and you want to look at acquiring assets and you want to learn how to do that in a smart way. Because I left home at the age of 17 with 170 pounds. And if you're at that stage, that is exactly why myself and my wife Aniko started Touchstone Education 10 years ago. And I know that what I've given you on this Money Matters is a bit of a rant, but the good news that I want to give you is it is possible. The homework, if I could put it like that, is absorb as much as possible of the content of this channel. Look at all the other videos. That's number one. Number two, having done that, decide, do you dare to be different? Because if you make that decision that you're gonna dare to be different, Number three, become part of the Touchstone community. Get onto Facebook or wherever you prefer to go, but let's say Facebook, for example, and just search Touchstone Education. Look for the Touchstone Education community. It's pretty big. It's free to join. It will support you on your journey to different. And I want to end with a message of hope. The hope, the light at the end of the tunnel that I want to share with you is so many people in this fantastic Touchstone Education family have made that choice. They are now different and they're not beholden to their political lords and masters anymore. And I don't want you to be either. Whichever way you vote, make sure you get the right result for you. You might need to vote with your feet, not with your pencil, and you might need to go and do something different. You are wonderful. Give yourself permission to shine. You're wonderful. I'm Paul. See you next time.